Alrighty guys, jumping straight back into it. So just addressing a few things from last video. As you would have seen, we did the VT front brakes and uh, suspension stuff, coilovers. Anyway, moving forward, um, the calipers are on the wrong side. They're upside down. The bleed nipple needs to be on top because air rises. Um, so that would have been uh, tricky to bleed up when I came to it. So I'm glad old mate in the last video commented and let me know. Guys, just reaching out. If there's something that you know isn't quite right, or you do differently, just let me know because I do read the comments and go through and you know, I, I'm all learning. This is all a big learning curve for me. This is the first car I guess I've built to you know, a high quality standard. So I wanna keep that quality up and you guys will definitely help me do that. So um, let's change those over and go from there. Another thing I wanna address from last video, uh, Damo, and there was someone in the comments as well, mentioned that um, you can't, paint over bare metal obviously if it's not etch primed or epoxy so um keep that in mind guys when you are using your sound detonator or your stone guard you should you should epoxy it or you should etch primer at first so hot tip don't do what i do learn from my mistakes let's uh, swap these calipers over get into the rear end and start getting uh, on with these brakes and then the woodwood master is coming very soon Now moving forward, I, uh, I definitely wish I shortened the diff. It looks pretty fat on camera, but in person, these uh, these little tires, I don't think they're gonna hold up to much with the power we're gonna throw at it, but that's uh, a part of it. I got 31 billet spine axles in the back of this, and uh, supposedly you can get them shortened, like chopped, respined, and you can use them again. So. That is a good thing. They're not like a throwaway item. If you buy like the shorter ones or the longer ones, um, obviously if you buy a longer, you can sh shorten them, which is a good thing. So that's uh, what the rear end looks like at the moment. Let's throw this panard rod in and nip up all the suspension components. I need to do the front as well. And uh, let's do it. <laughs> Deep in my thoughts when I didn't have it Sleeping on the floor, wishing it was a mattress Now I'm in Hollywood with actors and actress Where everybody bougie, latest trends and fashions I'd rather keep it a buck, a hundred if you ask me I was trying to pay the bills just like last Alrighty, week Alrighty guys, what you're looking at here is a VL Commodore It's like a VL to VS um, rear disc brake conversion kit pretty well um, This is what we're looking at, this is what we got Today we're going to put it on the VL And uh, I'm going to show you how we go about it so I've been busy under here. I'm just tidying up a few little bits and pieces in the rear end. Uh, panard rod is in, it is fouling on that rear diff cover. I have to do either um, some modification to that rear uh, rear bolt or um, just maybe get some heat into that panhard rod and uh, just get that little bit of clearance because it's just not quite enough. So the sway bar. The lighting's fighting me right now, but take it from me. Rear sway bar's in, panard rod is in. Um, I've nipped up the whole rear end, and it is uh, looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. It looks very neat under there. Neat, very tidy. Um, I'll chuck a few photos in. It's obviously a bit dusty and stuff, but today it's, again, bloody 30, 30 plus, so it's pretty hot in the shed, but um, we got the old Bunnings fans cranking, so we'll make it work, but... We're going to uh, go ahead and, and put these rear brakes on. And then we can look at installing that uh, Willwood Master. So stay tuned for that. Let's do it. Let's jump into it. Um, Seb, who sold me the kit, pulled it all apart and stuff. So he's going to come down and uh, give me some few pointers. Make sure I don't put anything on backwards or uh, incorrectly. Because I seem to do that with brakes. But anyway, we'll jump into it. We'll walk you through the process and uh, how we go about tackling the uh, rear end brakes. Alrighty, guys. So we're... Uh... We're tackling these rear brakes now. We've just pulled this axle out. There's no diff oil in it, so not too much of a mess. But we've uh, we popped that out just because it's easier to connect these two springs. Um, so your little clips here, this pin goes in the back, and then you can see this little, uh, what would you call this? Like the spring-loaded spring tab? tab yeah. Like a spring tab. Anyway, that goes in there. Holds that like that. So we've got to replicate this other side now, and then we'll... Uh, Show you what's going on with the springs. All right, fast forward. Um, we put this uh, right-hand side shoe on. Couple of springs. And then we got this little gubba down here. I don't know what this is called, but it's for the, 
the handbrake cable which runs into the back of the uh, the caliper. Sorry, yeah. As Seb's demonstrating there, that's how it works. Can you, oh, here we go. So obviously as we pull the handbrake, the shoes expand and then on the inner side of the disc, it um it expands onto the inner side of the disc and it works handbrake. That's handbrake. Very good. So now the other side uh, we can't do because we're missing a little piece. This little, uh, see that little circle bit there? We're missing that. So we have to go to you steal it and grab one of those. But for now, we can, um, I'm gonna put the handbrake cable in and get that all nipped up, all ready to go. I might have to adjust that because I'm using a drum brake cable. I still need to figure out if that works or not, but we'll give it a shot and we'll let you know. All right, so the plan is, I'm just going to leave it as it is now. I've rerouted that handbrake cable. It is now connected to the back. So that's usually a pretty pain in the ass job. So that's now done. Moving forward, I'm going to put the axle back in. We'll line it up and we'll put these four, uh, four uh, nuts back on to hold the axle in place. And then the handbrake assembly stuff is done. So we can uh, move forward with that. I won't put the brakes and stuff on just yet because we do have to adjust um, handbrake. So there's no point putting them all on and to take them off again. So let's uh, put this in and go from there. Off. It's a bit concerning when uh, there's no VS Commodores around. Fucking hell. <clears throat> Alright guys, so we're looking for a VS. Oh, what's this thing here? There we are. Here we are. You're joking. See that different again? Oh, that's why. That's useless to us. That's an IRS car. VS, VS, VS. We need boys. Fucking heaps of ETs. <clears throat> heaps of VYs. <laughs> Here we go. Surely it's got a diff in it. And no. Axles are gone. Rear brakes are gone. Fuck. I honestly thought we weren't going to find one, so this is a statesman anyway, but I think this is what we need, and it's still got the uh, the brake set up it, oh no, it's, oh fuck, it's IRS, shit, I thought I was on there. You gotta be fucking kidding me. There's not a single solid axle VS Commodore in your bullet. What the fuck? <laughs> You're joking, dude. Mission failed. Far out. You pull it, Gilman, Adelaide. VR, VR, or VN to VS. Solid rear. There's no, there's nothing. There's no VSs, there's no VRs, and if they are, there's no rear ends in them. And if they do have a rear end, they're IRS. So, we've got to shoot up to Elizabeth, which is probably know, 15, 15 k's from here. Not too bad, we'll go for a drive. Let's see if they've got it. This joint's good, because it's half undercover. I brought my little uh, brought my little thing to lie on and sit on. Didn't need it, because there's no cars to work on. So, go on to Elizabeth. It's pretty hot today. You wouldn't believe it. It's fucking hot every day. Let's go to Elizabeth. Let's get it done. Let's find this tiny little like pivot. It's just like a pivot screw. I'll show you what I mean, but tiny little, uh, tiny little single thing I need. But let's go do it. Hopefully there's one at Elizabeth. I hope. If there's not, I'll tell you what, <laughs> we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, right. Alright, here we go. Elizabeth. 
first thing down the first or second aisle. Commodore bit. You can tell someone's already been here. And of course, I've obviously pulled the axles and the center out of it. But what I need is these bolts here. Second one and news we have uh, found a vs with a solid rear just took us going to elizabeth i won't make that mistake again so guys what we're looking at here we need this handbrake assembly so i'm going to quickly pull these out and then this little the little bit under there for the handbrake see that little see that little pin there that's what we need we need this bit here so there's a little pin in here. I didn't even know that spring was meant to be in there. There you go. A bit of a cross reference for myself. Let's pull this out and go from there. There we go. So I was, while I was here, I was gonna pull out the handbrake cable, but someone's chopped them for me. Cheeky bugger. I was gonna pull them out as well have to make the trip back but guys we have got what we needed took you two you bullets to uh, get a tiny little little brake lever adapter fucking thing i don't even know what to call it it's definitely not an adapter but let's go all right so we've got what we need let's go back to the shed put the brakes on let's do it what was going on here I want to get near this thing. I need the handbrake cables from it, but. <laughs> All right, so we can jump straight back into it pretty well. What I um, explained last time, we're going to pull these axles out, start slapping the handbrake shoes on, um, using like the springs and the uh, and the tensioners. Put it all back together and then uh, hopefully we can have rear brakes. Then I've got to look at if this handbrake line is going to work. So yeah, I could probably go down there, steal the handbrake cables from those if I need to. So anyway, let's jump straight back into it. Let's get some shit done. Some people might be asking why we take the axles out. Um, I personally do it. One, because there's no diff oil in it. Um, it's a fresh build, so there's no oil or anything in it. So it's not really going to make a mess. Um, and two, it's a lot easier to put these top and bottom springs in, let alone the tensioner and then the handbrake um, lever itself. So... That's done now. Um, pretty well what I'm going to do, I'm going to install this bottom one first and then um, we can go on to the top. So this little contraption here, this is why we had to run around today. There you go, lads. As it works. So we're going behind here. So end of this handbrake line, there's an opening. You have to route that through this. Uh, where is it? Through here. And then you see this little, uh, little latch down here. And that's what, um, that's what applies your handbrake. <laughs> and that is what applies your handbrake. You get the idea. So that's the movement you want. That's a setup you want. Now, the next tricky thing is one person, you got to get your axles in. But these, it's tricky because you have to kick that out to the side to get this plate so you have to kind of have to like wiggle it and maneuver it to get that plate inside there, then put the axle in and then tighten it up. So you get the idea. Let's do it now. There you go. 
all, uh, all nipped up, all done. Axle's back in. Happy days. Stoke, that's done. That's another thing off the list. Um, don't forget this spring and uh, having a closer look at this handbrake cable, I think it's gonna work, which is a bonus. It's got heaps of um, heaps of adjustment either way. Like the handbrake mechanism in the, under the car is right in the middle. So if I need to tighten it up, we can. Um, I guess we won't really know until we actually put the rotors and the brakes on, or at least the rotors on, because then we get the amount of clicks through the handbrake. Right now, I can just pull it up and it'll continue stretching because there's obviously nothing to contain the actual handbrake shoe itself. So pretty well, we can uh, put, the, put the rotors on and then we can count the clicks. And if we're happy with that, and it retracts and it all goes well, happy days. The rear, uh, rear brakes can go on once that's uh, all sorted. I think it's about five clicks. F5, I think, I think the rule of thumb, there's a certain rule of thumb to clips for the handbrake, but I'm just gonna go roughly five, five to 10, anywhere in there, um, should be good. Not bad, not bad at all. So I'll show you what's going on here. Um, oh, that's probably two, three, four, five, eight, nine. I don't know if that's too, I think that might be a little bit too high. So I could probably adjust a tad more. That's about eight to nine clicks there. And uh, I'll tell you for free, she don't move. So happy days. How good does that look? Except this dirty spring. I've got to clean that. But anyway, that's, uh, that's good. Happy days. My mind run deep in my thoughts when I didn't have it Sleeping on the floor, wishing it was a mattress Now I'm in Hollywood with actors and actress Where everybody bougie, latest trends and fashions I'd rather keep it a buck, a hundred if you ask me I was trying to pay the bills just like last week I was trying to sell a deal just like last week Trying to run plays and run it up Alright guys, here we go So, the Woolwood Mast has finally rocked up Well, I finally bought it Um... Postage time from Castle Main road shop is insane. So shout out to Castle Main for being super quick and easy to deal with. I write an email, um, they send me back an invoice, pay the invoice, as soon as it's paid, it's at your, pretty well at your doorstep the next day. So shout out to those guys. What we have here is the Wilwood Master, as I've been talking about. Um, some of you might not like the polish with the black lid, but I've opted to go that way because I've seen a few black, um, Four black Woolwoods, they look very dull after a while, especially brake fluid and bleeding. And you know, you know, guys know what it's like, or if you guys know what it's like, um, brake fluid dulls a lot of color off, so and it will eat your paint. So, I went with the uh, polished because I think it will uh, suit the color of the uh, of the VL, obviously, and then uh, it will suit the black and the polished look that I'm trying to achieve in this bait. So what we got here is um, I pretty well bought the kit to suit VL, which comes with the rod shop adapter. As you can see here, I've got to put this in properly, but there's a nice billet piece with the rod shop logo on top. But guys, super stoked to have this. Um, I would recommend going to watch Castle Main Rod Shop's video um, about how to self, like how to bench bleed these, how to install them, putting the boots on, putting your little pedal connector on, and uh, yeah how to do it properly. Just a disclaimer, I am not a mechanic, I'm not a brake specialist. Um, if you guys have any questions, probably hit up Castle Main or Willwood themselves. They're the, they're the people that, you know, obviously sell this product and uh, back it. So go hit them up, I'm not a mechanic. Take what, uh, take what I do with a grain of salt and just enjoy it for a bit of entertainment purposes. So I'll take you along the way. Pretty well what we're gonna do now is um, test fit. Obviously it's not a final fit, so we don't need a bench plate at first. We're gonna test fit, make some lines up, and uh, see what it looks like in the bay. So let's secure this mounting bracket. Pretty well what this does is it adapt the, the, factory, the factory position uh, for the master into the wheel wood. So it's a nice, beautiful billet polished piece, and happy days. So we'll tighten this up, put this on with the color Allen keys, it's super straightforward. So. Let's do it and I will take it along. My mind 
run deep in my thoughts when I didn't have it Sleeping on the floor, wishing it was a mattress Now I'm in Hollywood with actors and actress Where everybody bougie, latest trends and fashions I'd rather keep it a buck, a hundred if you ask me I was trying to pay the bills just like last week I was trying to sell a deal just like last week Trying to run plays and run it up like the math leaks. It's in my DNA to have hope and make a way Good energy will hit that Look at how simple that looks How good is that? Fuck yeah. Sometimes I wish this bay was painted for sure because all these nice little bits, you'd really emphasize how good they look. But I guess it's uh, a bit of a sneak peek of what it looks like in the build process. Shows you guys what it's like to actually build a car from kind of top to bottom. I'm not fabricating anything. Like it's straight, like how it is is how you will see it, which is good, I guess. So it gives you an idea of what it takes to kind of build a car I'm gonna look back in like two years time, when it's done, when it's sorted, when it's finished. Yeah, fuck, I've come a long way. So, little stuff like this makes me very excited because it's another piece of the puzzle. And uh, we bought a pipe bender as well from Aeroflow. Aeroflow pipe bender there, five in one tube bender, um, which will come in handy for sure because after this is all installed, uh, the next thing we kind of do is we need to break, uh, we need to make some brake lines, so. It's all starting to uh, come together, that's for sure. Looks very tidy under here. Alrighty guys, so jumping straight back into the VL. Um, last couple of days, we've been uh, putting the brakes all back together, getting the uh, calipers, all the handbrake dialed in. That's all good, so the rear end stuff is now done. Um, pretty well finalized. I do have to um, take out that lower that lower control arm, box it, paint it black. Um, probably put some new bushings and stuff in it. So that is all. Um, that's soon to be done. But uh, moving forward, jumping back into the engine bay, something I have um, kind of left off for a little bit, which I needed to uh, tackle. All right. If you look at these uh, black seam seam sealer spots, you will see that uh, we've been busy. So I've been needing to seal and contain a few little um, little areas where we welded and patched up and whatnot. So that is now done. We rust blasted it and then we etch primed it and then we sealed it. Um, same with a few little bits behind this cow panel here when we welded the, uh, the holes up there. Moving forward now, the brakes are done. Like front and rear brakes, they're pretty well all in ready to go. Now we've test fitted that master. We need to start looking at what we're doing for brake lines. So brake line side of thing, um, that is still to come. That is not gonna get done in this video because this video is already half an hour long. So guys, I just wanted to touch base with you and kind of close it out, let you know what we've done. Pretty well we converted the rear disc brakes, um, sorry, the rear drum brakes to discs. That's something we got off the list, ticked another thing done. So um, yeah, just touching base with you guys. Um, <clears throat> moving forward. This car will be getting some custom brake lines throughout the whole thing and fuel lines. So we've taken the stock stuff out, removed it from the vehicle. And so we can kind of replicate it, the stock, um, the aftermarket stuff out of the car. Then we just put it in the car. So there's going to be a lot of uh, exciting bits and pieces coming along, doing some research on how we're going to go about it. But stay tuned for that, guys. Um, it's one of those things once it's kind of done, Yes, a bit painful um, to plan and do it all now, but once it's done, I'll be looking back going, that's sweet. So um, I just want to touch base with you guys as well and let you know what's going on. Um, this car is, it's an original car. It hasn't been painted or anything like that. So moving forward, there's a few little rust spots I'm kind of starting to see, um, see being exposed. And in the long term, I guess if I'm doing such a, quality build to this car i need to know kind of where to stop so considering i've got no interior i've got pretty well the car's pretty well bare what do you guys think i should do should i pull the windows out fix the rust because i can do most of that myself um i can do the rust repairs and then get the roof blown in paint the quarters um you get what i mean like do you, what do you guys think what would you do if you kind of where i'm at with it now i don't want to necessarily paint the whole car but i would love to um fix the rust spots, put a new front window in, fix the rust around the front window, the rear window, at least get that all um, all tidied up and make sure if I do want to paint the car later on, I can. 
But guys, let me know what you think about that because it's one of those things I'm a, a little bit unsure. Obviously, I've got to paint the base, so what would it be harm? Um, there wouldn't be much harm blowing in the roof or blowing in this lower panel here because I dare say there's going to be some rust. We could see it through the inside of the window. Um, I can sh I'll spin it around and show you. See, a couple of crusty bits here. So I dare say there's going to uh, start forming some rust in the long term. There's one little bubble through here, through this section here. See, I was thinking if I... Uh, was to take the windows out, fix the rust, at least later on, if we needed blow in the, blow in the quarters or blow in the roof, um, the rust is, is gone, you know? So it's one of those things like, do I just bite the bullet, paint the whole car, try to do as much as I can myself and then just pay someone to paint color? Or do I leave it as it is, deal with the rust spots developing? And obviously they're not gonna get better. They're only gonna get a little bit worse. So another little rust, little rust bubble there which i dare say would be that section would be affected this section would be affected down here there'd be a few little spots around this window do i um do i do it now while well, i've got no interior no electrical do all the body work first and then i can you know make a really nice car in the long run but that obviously comes at a cost so um taking more more of it's going to take more time and more money and the car will be off the road longer but it's one of those things, I guess, once it's done, it's done right. So, but yeah, that's, I uh, just wanted to touch base with you guys and tell you what I'm thinking and, and uh, what's going on. So, you know what you think, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more. I'm sure there's a few things I've missed in this video, but I just want to keep regular uploads for you guys. Even if they, even if it's a small percentage of what I wanted to get done, if I can do half of the job and get a video out for you guys, um, I'm sure you guys would uh, appreciate that. So at least I'm getting content out. So let's, uh, let's do it, guys. I'll uh, see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. And yeah, uh, see you next time.